Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the City Session today, our City Explains session, where we're going to be giving you an introduction to um, the world of City. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, we're, we're all live now. Technic all our technical side is working. Um, thank you so much for, for coming along and, and listening to us today. So, my name's Emma. I'm part of the... Hi, we're just having a bit of technical difficulty, Emma. Um, if you just try your sound again. Okay, what I recommend is leaving and then kind of getting feedback on that. Apologies. No problem. Okay, Thank thanks. Hi, I'm sorry if there was some feedback there. I'm not quite sure if um, uh, I came across twice, so I'm going to start again. Um, my name's Emma. I head up the um, child and attraction engagement team here at City, and I'm just going to introduce our session today. I'm going to hand over to Laura, who's going to be talking through an introduction to City um, and a little bit more about what we do here. So, Laura, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you, Emma. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, really, really glad to to have you online today and to be able to address you all from um, our spare bedroom. Um, it's definitely a new normal that we're working through at the moment, so I congratulate um, all of you for continuing to strive forward um, to learn about uh, the UK's top employers um, and to get to know us a little bit more today. So. I'm going to jump right in and just give a quick introduction to myself. So my name is Laura Gibson. I am a director in our corporate bank. Um, I sit in our public sector team, which means that I work with uh, clients that are uh, chiefly governments, but also development banks and central banks. Um, and my clients include the UK government and the Irish government. Um, I've been a banker for 13 years now. Um, I've done a little bit of of everything it feels like at this stage. I've moved around a wee bit. I started my career in M&A, UK M&A at another US bank. And then I moved from that team onto the trading floor where I worked in equity sales covering SAMEA, so including um, Russia and Turkey um, and MENA. And then when I joined City seven years ago, I joined our corporate broking desk. Um, an equity capital markets team. And then about five years ago, I moved into our corporate bank and I've been a public sector banker since then. Um, I wanted just to, before I dive into the overview of City, just speak a little bit about my day-to-day -day role um, and look forward to your questions on that later on. Um, but I, I serve the government, as I said, and it's an interesting time to work with governments and sovereigns, um, given all of the rescue packages that have been released um, to help us combat COVID-19, not just from a health perspective, but from an economic perspective. And we support the government in the implementation of some of those rescue packages, which is very interesting and, and feels like a very tangible way to be helping the UK economy at the moment. Um, so from the day to day outside of COVID, what do we do as a government? We move money around for them. We're one of the largest movers of money globally, and we'll come on to that. Um, but we pay, for example, overseas pensioners for the Department of Work and Pensions. So those who have earned their pension in the UK and have then moved abroad, we pay them in local currency on behalf of the government through our uh, our pipes um, uh, every month. So it's about a million people overseas every month that we pay. We also work with the Ministry of Defence. We are on their panel for fuel price hedging. So they, um, they have a budget to spend on fuel of about 600 million every three years. And, um, and we help them to lock in the fuel price in order to help with their budgeting. Um, we also work at the Foreign Commonwealth Office, paying um, salaries and uh, overseas expen uh, expenses. Um, we also work in a lot of sort of thought leadership with the government, helping them to understand the future of payments, how they can work with the financial institutions within the UK. We work, we work with the UK government investments team on the sales of assets, so public, publicly owned assets that they may, may need advice around. So it's a real broad spectrum. Every day is different um, and every role that we play with different government departments is different. But I look forward to your questions, like I said, on that and, and would love to jump into giving you a quick overview of City. So first of all, wanted to show um, with the first slide 
an overview of where we're located. I think one of the unique things about City is just how global we are. So we're based in over um, 100 countries and we operate in 160. So there are very few, you can see from the map, very few countries that we aren't either present in or operate in. And that gives us a real global network. Now, in my job with the UK government, that is absolutely crucial because um, very often my clients ask me within the different departments what our view is on things that are going on around the world. Um, and, and I really appreciate the ability to pick up the phone and call people wherever I need to speak to someone. Um, and they can give me you know, straight away an opinion on what's happening and what's unfolding in that particular country. And I can feed that back. Um, we work holistically like that across the world um, and we're across all time zones. It also means that we are uniquely positioned to help our multinational corporate clients. So those large, large um, corporates that operate globally, we can help them with their banking needs um, in all the countries that they are situated in. We, we have over 200,000 employees globally, um, of which around 6,000 are in London. Um, we've got about 2,500 in Belfast, and I think about 200 in Edinburgh, just to give you the local UK numbers. Um, we have trading floors, floors in 80 countries. And like I said, we're the largest mover of money globally given that we have the network that we have. Moving on to the next slide, this gives you a, a good impression of where we're positioned. So like I said, because, because we're so global, um, we're able to serve our clients in a very holistic way across all of the locations where we're situated. We're placed number one in our treasury and trade solutions business. That's, that's really our payments and receivables, so moving money around and trade solutions for our clients. We're number one in fixed income markets. Number two in global investment banks banking for the clients that we work with, and number one in global um the number one sorry global credit card issuer. To to give you a bit of scale, how much money are we actually moving around? So on average, it's around four trillion dollars of liquidity through our platform. Um, we've returned six point two billion of capital to shareholders to the end of twenty nineteen, and our net income was five billion in Q4 2019. And those those numbers are really just to give you a, a sort of a sense of scale of how large our business is and um, the importance of the, of the business that we do in the markets where we operate. It's important, I think, for me to move to the next slide and just give you a quick introduction to some of the businesses that we have. It can be quite challenging, I think, um, whenever you're at school and university to fully understand what an investment bank actually does. Um, and so I'm keen to just walk through some of the different roles um, to make sure that we give you an overview, a proper understanding um, of what, what the different roles entail. Again, very happy to, um, to take your questions on, on this at the end. So um, on the left, we speak about the retail bank. Now, that's slightly less relevant to us in the UK because we don't actually have branches in the UK. But if, you're, if you ever visit the US, you obviously see our our retail branches, a high street bank, um, you know, as you walk down the main streets of, of many of the cities in, in the US, um, we provide credit cards um, and it's a very strong business in the US. Um, and we're very well known in the countries where we operate in that way and also in Asia Pac. Moving on to BCMA, um, the institutional clients group. So within BCMA, um, banking, capital markets and advisory, there are really three parts to that business. Investment banking, where our bankers advise on mergers and acquisitions. Now, what does that actually mean day to day? Effectively, it means buying and selling parts of, of businesses on behalf of corporate clients. So the day to day, what the tasks entail are valuing companies um, to ensure that a fair price is paid either by the, the buyer or indeed by the seller. Um, the timing of those transactions and how they're actually executed within the market. So uh, interacting with the investors that might buy a stake or indeed buy, buy the whole company. Corporate banking, that's the part of the bank that I sit in. We're doing a similar type of analysis in that we're looking at the cash flows of the, of the corporates that we work with, but really from a credit perspective. So effectively, we city are acting as a corporate bank to those corporates in the same way as your high street bank acts as a bank to you. So if you were go if you were to go into a bank and ask for a loan, they would assess your credit worthiness, your ability to pay back that loan, 
And that's exactly what we're doing with the corporates that we work with. So assessing based on their cash flows and their um, forecast financials, the position that they're in to pay back the loan. And then it's our decision to understand that risk and make a decision as to whether we extend the loan or not. Um, and then we have CMO, capital markets origination. So our equity capital markets and our debt capital markets. And that's working with corporates who need to access uh, the markets for additional capital, either on the equity side through CM or on the debt side through DCM. We also have our markets and security services part of the business. So those are those are all the desks that assist corporates with the needs um, from both an FX and a commodities perspective. So let's say we're working with multinationals that have locations all over the world and want to hedge their FX exposure or indeed their commodity exposure in the same way as we help the Ministry of Defence with their fuel price hedging. They will work with our markets um, colleagues in order to do that. TTS, we spoke about four, trade and treasury, treasury solutions. Really, that's moving money around, so payments and receivables. Accounts, bank accounts for corporates. Our private bank, so working with high net worth individuals. And finally, our commercial bank, which is very similar to the corporate bank, um, but uh, for, for smaller, uh, small and medium sized enterprises. So not the multinationals, but those smaller local businesses. And then supporting that, of course, we have another, we have another section on the right hand side of very important um, business functions that we work with every day. So of course, HR, Emma being a, a very valued colleague on that side, hiring the best talent that we can bring into city. We have legal teams, we have compliance teams, um, we have finance that help look after our own balance sheet. Um, and those are the, the different types of functions that are, exist over and above um, the banking side. Um, and again, like I said, very valued parts of the business um, that we work with day to day. Um, and I think it's important to highlight genuinely how important these parts of the business are because very often you get an idea that there are really only banking jobs within an investment bank and that's absolutely not the case. So if you're looking at potentially studying law, for example, we have a, a relatively large um, internal legal counsel team. Um, so for those of you who have maybe an interest in law and also in finance, um, that, might be, um, that might be a route for you. Um, compliance, helping us also to manage our risk, both in terms of operations and also in terms of our day-to-day -day business. Um, and these these are just absolutely invaluable um, colleagues for us to ensure that what we're doing is correct and accurate on the regulatory side. So something worth bearing in mind if you think that maybe a front office banking job is not for you. Bear in mind that there are many others out there within the bank um, also to consider. So finally, moving to, to the last slide. Um, and, I, and here I wanted to touch on why I specifically have chosen to work at City. Um, there are many reasons, but first of all, like I said, global network is just absolutely crucial to me. I love to travel. I love to work with clients abroad. I love having a, a network globally that I can, can tap whenever I get global questions from my clients, which I do on a day to day basis. Um, and that's exactly the way that we work. We work as a global network and that is very valued by our clients. And like I said, when working with multinationals, being able to do that is absolutely key because we're based in the locations where they are and we can offer our services where they are as well. We very much work as a team at City, and that was very important to me. Um, and it's, it's especially important to consider when thinking about your future career because you spend quite a lot of your life at work and you want to enjoy working with those people that you're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. And City, our culture, we're, we're very much set up to work together. Um, it's a team effort and we deliver as a team to be the best for our clients. Wellness, flexibility and remote working are also very important to me to make sure that I have a work life balance. Um, I'm married. I have a life outside of work. I enjoy sport. I play hockey. I do open water swimming um, and I wanted to build a career somewhere that would permit me the time and the flexibility to be able to keep up those pursuits. Um, and City very much promote that within their values. You know, um, happy, happy employees are productive employees and they realize that in order to be productive, um, you, you have to rest and you have to get some time to yourself and with your family. Um, so yeah, that was very important to me. Um, 
moving on charity and our support of charities was also very important to me. Um, we have a community day once a year where we go out into the community and help um, help with you know fixing parks and and playgrounds and um, centers for for young people um, and to be able to spend a day that is funded by city out in the community giving back is is really important to me. I'm also involved. Um, with a charity called Emmaus in London that helps um, homeless people get back on their feet by offering them a way to, to build their own um, source of income. Um, and City have supported that charity through some of their different funding programmes for charities that I've been involved with in, in London. And finally, ESG. You know, City have made a huge commitment to green financing. So in July, we announced that we will be putting $250 billion towards green financing over the next five years. Um, and this is crucial. We all know the journey to net zero is not an easy one, but I'm very proud to work for an institution that are fully committed um, in everything that we do to, to help where we, where we, the nations that we operate in to hit those targets. So again, um, these are all the reasons that I, uh, that I have decided to, to, um, to work at City. Sorry, my connection seems to have frozen. I hope you can still hear me okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's everything that I wanted to say in our opening remarks. Um, and maybe if I could hand over to Emma to cover a few more slides before we jump to Q&A. Thank you. Thanks so much, Laura. Um, thanks everyone and apologies for my technical hitch at the start. Um, I'm just going to very briefly touch um, on the recruitment side of um, all of these programs that Laura was mentioning and you know hopefully now you have a great understanding of um, a little bit more about the organization and, and excited to learn how you can join so this is my part um, so I just want to this is a high level overview really of our um, programs that you can join at City um, we have a main route of entry for our full-time graduate program is our summer internship. So this is our summer analyst program. This is predominantly aimed at penultimate year students, so anyone due to graduate in 2022. However, it is all these programs are also open to finalists as well, um, and graduates with that. This year, um, our internship looked very different. Um, it was virtual. It was the first time we've ever done anything like that, and. Um, because of the circumstances, we did offer all of our summer interns opportunity to join us again in 2021 as a graduate. That has had a knock-on impact that meant we haven't opened up our graduate opportunities this year. And um, that's because we've now filled largely all of those, gra those graduate opportunities. And if anything changes, we will of course open them up. But if you are a finalist, currently the only opportunity to join us is through our 2021 summer internship program. Um, these are 10-week programs and we hope we'll be back to being a physical internship in 2021 um, where you get real exposure to one of the teams that Laura mentioned um, we have uh, opportunities in all of the main um, ICG businesses but also in technology um, and operations also um, the other program that we run is our spring insight week which is for those of you that are going to be graduating in 2023 um, these were designed for students that were in their first year of study that were really interested in learning more about um, the organization. This is a one week work experience um, and it's a feeder really to our summer internship. You don't need to have done a spring program to secure a summer program job with us. Um, our spring site insight program is a lot smaller than our summer internship program. Um, and these are the ways uh, that spring insight is really to give you an exposure to the organization, but the most successful spring interns will be offered um, an opportunity to be assessed for the summer internship the following summer. So you'd be uh, running your spring in 2021, summer in 2022, and then in theory joining us in 2023. Um, the Spring Insight Week this year, um, so for 2021, is being discussed, it will be virtual physical. We're currently planning for both scenarios, but probably leaning slightly towards a virtual internship based on some of the circumstances and the realities of bringing uh, such a high volume of people into, into the office. So um, please keep a look out for that. But whatever happens, we will still be running some form of internship and committing to our, our interns. It's really important for us that we still get to work with you, whichever way we can do that. And over the last few months, we've learned a lot about our technology and how to run these things even better. Um, so we'll be equipped to, to give you the best experience possible. Um, the application process um, is as follows. So it's the CV online. Um, with your CV, you'll ask three motivational questions. They are around you as a person, 
why you're motivated for city and then a bit about your commercial awareness to help us understand why you know the world of finance might be right for you um my top tip is when you're applying is probably to pre-prepare the answers to those questions you can go in and check what those questions might be save your application and come back to it um, we've had a few cases of people being locked out where they've they've stayed on the page for too long but also you do want to prep those they they are really what makes you stand out from the crowd um because cvs you know everyone has great cvs i'm sure you're all studying at great universities and great degrees your your motivational questions will help you stand out from the crowd um if you pass our first screening so that's based on your um uh grades and the quality of your application you're then invited to take the online test so it's not automatic um it, you will be selected to take the online test um, you can practice the online test uh, at a website called trytalentq.com um, and there you will be able to try the numeracy test, which is most of our business areas test. But if you're interested in technology, it will be the logical reasoning test. Um, if you pass the online test, you're in our next screening phase. And if any of you have done that with us already, that is the longest period of time when you'll be in the recruitment process. It really varies between the different business areas you're applying to, the time you apply, the number of applications we're receiving and when our assessments are going to be taking place to when we can start inviting people through. Um, but we will let you know the outcome either way. But it does passing the test does not ensure an interview. It just gets you to the next screening phase. If you do make it to interview, the first round will be telephone interviews um, with somebody from the business. So if you apply, um, it could be someone like Laura interviewing or someone from the investment bank, sometimes the investment bank or Treasury and Trade Solutions. But it's not it's HR organised that we don't run the interviews. Um, the, and then the assessment centre is going to be hosted via Zoom. So similar to what we've run in the past, that there won't be any group exercise um, because of the, the setup now. Um, so everything's virtual. So wherever you are based, you'll be able to still be assessed by us. And then hopefully you would receive an offer. Um, I've included the deadlines here. Um, the spring deadline is completely valid. Um, you ha I wouldn't say you need to get your applications in much earlier than early November. Um, we haven't started screening for that program yet. The summer internship, I would highly recommend applying as soon as possible. Um, investment banking is actually going to close on the 30th of October. So um, we need to close that earlier due to the high volumes we're receiving. So it's only going to be open for two more weeks. So if you haven't applied yet but, and you are interested particularly in the investment bank, then you should need to get your application in within the next week. Um, but otherwise, check the vacancy on the website for any other information around that. Um, that's enough of me talking now. Um, we're going to hand over to you guys, and I think um, we're going to have some questions now from the audience. And uh, I think one of our colleagues is going to join us to help us with the questions. So, um, guys, if we can hand over to questions now, that would be great. Hello. Hi, Lizzie. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, lovely to see you both, and um, uh, really interesting. Loads of I've, I've learned lots about City, so thank you very much for that. Um, for everyone else in the audience, I'm also I'm joining from Rate to My Placement, so I've had the pleasure of looking at your questions. Also got some great questions as well, and um, so I'm just going to crack on then and start them. Okay. So, um, Laura, I'll start with you. So that was really interesting hearing about the business. Um, I loved the, the comment where you said largest mover of money globally. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a question around how does it feel to work for a bank where that's what you're doing? <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, it feels um, it feels really important, you know, and I guess tangible in terms of the um, the difference that we're making to the clients that we work with. Um, very often we are the only bank that's in a position to move money to those places and so um we're very aware of how reliant our um, multinational corporates uh, corporate clients are that work with us my specific um example of moving money around for the uk government and for other governments globally you know um it's we're serving the community in that way we're, we're paying citizens who've who've earned their pension in the uk and then moved abroad um and I'm really proud of that um, as a banker, that we're in a position to be able to do that. Mm, definitely. And um, kind of moving on, on from that, in terms of your role, uh, it sounds like you get involved in a lot of different things. You talked about your charity work um, and talked about the culture as well. So I just wanted to, I don't know if this is going to be quite a hard question, but if you could, in a nutshell, um, share with us what you 
what you think is the best part of your job or working at City, that would be amazing. Absolutely. So, um, like I said before, I, I, I really enjoy being in a job where I can, I feel like I can give back mm -hmm. and working with government specifically allows me to do that because all of the solutions that we provide are felt by the economy in which we live. Um, maybe not always directly, although it is directly with the citizens that, for example, receive their pensions. Um, but also we're supporting the government in, in things behind the scenes. So that like the fuel price hedging for the Ministry of Defence and ensuring that the Ministry of Defence, that they're searching on the budget over and above fuel. So that feels very tangible to me in how we're supporting the UK economy and, um, and HM government as our client. But, but more than that, what I enjoy is interacting with my clients on a, uh, my employees on or sorry, my colleagues, I should say, or city employees on a, on a global basis every day. So being able to reach out to colleagues um, on the ground in all the, all the countries where we operate to, to get their input. And it's so it's just so valuable to be able to do that um, and to have other employees of the firm who are experts in their field give opinions on things that are happening you know, all over the world. So let's say, for example, I get a phone call from um, CDC Group, which is the UK uh, development bank mm -hmm. um, owned and funded by HM government. They put money to work for HMG in Africa and South Asia. And sometimes they, there'll, there'll be something that has happened, let's say, in an African country, and it'll be a country where they um, where they operate but aren't necessarily located. Mm -hmm. And I'll get a phone call from one of the bankers to say, look, this has happened. Um, we need to understand the knock-on effects, the economy there. Um, and I can very quickly get my, my colleague um, based in that country on the phone with them to give them that feedback, um, you know, mm -hmm. directly. Um, within a very short space of time and I really enjoy the ability to be able to do that mm -hmm. and to be able to work as a team and a network to um, you know to really answer our 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 clients problems and issues as quickly yeah. as we can. Amazing and it, it sounds doesn't it sound like a small world when you just said you can get on the phone and just grab the phone to across the world and colleagues I think that that's really impressive um, we're now on Zoom, actually, right? So they yeah. can see them face to face. Yeah. And, I, and I think our business will evolve very much like that going forwards where clients, you know, and, and it's fantastic that our technology has, has developed so quickly to meet this new demand mm -hmm. where we can have a, a Zoom call with a client, with colleagues from all over the world um, coming in to give their, their perspective on a particular transaction or a solution or, again, an issue in the countries where we operate. So I look forward to working more and more like that as we yeah. go forward. And it's also much better for the environment that we don't travel so much, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Um, really good, really interesting. Okay, Emma, I'm going to come to you. <laughs> um, I, I think it would be really good to hear from, from you about what, what's your kind of favourite part of working at City? Um, you know, I think uh, there's two sides of it. One for me is working with people like Laura. So I'm really fortunate that my role kind of sits in the middle of all of the different teams that we work with. So I get to speak with analysts, MDs, directors uh, from all the different business areas. And I get to collaborate with them in trying to, you know, organize activities to find the right talent to come to City, but also supporting that talent through their journey here. Um, I really like it when I find, you know, I've got a few first years that I met when, you know, back when I first started the city as well, who I, I get to meet up with ever so often. And, you know, they're all moving on in their career at city. And it's really great to see because, um, you know, we've kind of seen them grow from that 18 year old that we met out on campus to now somebody running a team. So that's a really big part for me is like the collaboration that I get across the organization. And then I think also the bit that I really enjoy is just the breadth of that City's given me. I obviously get, I, when I was allowed to travel, um, got to travel to lots of different universities, meet so many different students. And I am enjoying now actually doing this virtually, largely because I don't have to get on a plane. But um, also the, the kind of insights that I'm getting from going to different places. And, and also I've had an opportunity to go to quite a lot of the City offices um, because we're such a large organisation, as Laura's already touched on, that it's really interesting you know I, I've been over to the Swedish office I've been over to the Tampa office um, the Milan office and you actually have this sort of vibe of it's all city wherever you are and, and that's really exciting and you know that you can kind of if I need to organize something with somebody in Milan 
I know who to go to and there is a team there that is mm. as city as me in the sense that they want to collaborate and they want to work with me I'm not you know I'm not feeling like I'm desperately reaching out and getting knocked back all the time it's a really collaborative environment mm. sounds really good so building on that question then <laughs> um, we've had a few questions from students around um how does city stand out uh, against its competitors so I don't know who wants to answer that first. I'm going to leave it to you to decide. I'll let Laura go first. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, and again, it comes back to global network. Um, being based in all the countries where a client wants to operate or is considering operating, um, being in touch with the investors that invest in those markets, um, being joined up across different time zones, that puts us in a unique position to work with clients in a way that perhaps others, um, you know, maybe don't have the capability to do so. Um, mm -hmm. So, like I said, moving um, different currencies around, um, having banking facilities on the ground in, the, in those locations, and then being able to bring the network together to produce very bespoke solutions, um, mm -hmm. depending on the client's needs. So I think that's our sort of number one unique um, aspect that allows us to work with clients maybe in a way that others cannot. Brilliant. Um, Emma, is there anything else from your side? <laughs> no, I think that's, you know, Laura's uh, hit the nail on the head there about how we stand out. And I think from um, the only bit I'm going to add is on from an early career perspective for our students looking to join is, you know, I, I'm not saying that any of our other competitors are not committed to early careers at all, but I think City has such a big investment in in that but also from a diversity angle we, you know we're very committed to ensuring that we're supporting all diversity coming into the organization and that we have an environment that is completely open but also for example with our internship we will not hire more interns than we will have full-time jobs so joining us as an intern if you're performing well you will get a job at the end of that you're not competing with your peers for that one job there's, there's not five of you competing for one job and that I think goes quite a long way because it means that we're getting the best out of people. We're not just, you know, we want to create a collaborative environment. And, and that's key for us at City is that there are as many interns as there are full-time jobs. And, and this summer, we offered every intern a full-time job because of the circumstances that we were in. Mm, that's, that's really good. Um, I if I might that. add, Lizzie, to that, to that one a wee bit more, just based on what Emma said, she makes a very, very good point around diversity. And that is so crucial um, to us at City. And I wanted to give a specific example of that. Um, I come from the border area of Northern Ireland, a very small country town. Um, and when I decided that I wanted to work in London and I wanted to come into investment banking, I didn't know very much about it. Um, you know, being where I was from, um, I had a regional accent. I was, you know, sort of felt maybe a little bit uh, ill prepared or um, you know a little bit different I suppose to the, the two others that were going through the process but those are the things that make you stand out being being mm -hmm. you know from from someone different or having a different background and that's where diversity is so key because like I said our clients are based everywhere and come from all sorts of backgrounds mm -hmm. and so having people that come from a diverse set of backgrounds um, is so crucial to be able to to understand and fully deliver mm -hmm. for our clients and I mentioned my example specifically because it actually came into its own working with the government mm -hmm. and we've been going through Brexit, as you all know. And suddenly my little town on the border of Northern Ireland became very central to the discussions that mm -hmm. were going on. And I was from the area and could give a perspective that maybe if you weren't from that area, you know, you wouldn't maybe know the inside track. So, like I said, you, you know, be proud of of. Um, of the different aspects that you can bring because those are the things that will get you noticed and will be most helpful and valuable when delivering for, for clients. Mm. Yeah, really, really good advice. And I think um, it's always hard to try and, I think lots of students listening are probably thinking, how, how can I stand out? What can I do to really show that I want to work at City? Especially after hearing everything that you're both talking about, it sounds really a really impressive place to work. So on that, that segues me nicely into the next question. Um, and someone, so Gabrielle has actually popped on here on the question um, board. Uh, what qualities does City look for when recruiting? Is that maybe one for Emma? <laughs> yeah, well, we can definitely take it together. But I, I, so it's a really good question. And it's always one I, and I've been doing this for a number of years. And I always struggle to answer because we don't have a set formula of who we're looking for. And I think that was to Laura's point just there. 
we really do need a diverse workforce. So we, you know, everybody has some, a unique selling point that will be a benefit to City. And, and you know, we have a great um, number of staff at City now, but we're not looking to try and replicate those staff. We need new people to come in and complement the staff that we already have. So mm. the general qualities that we're looking for is obviously strong academics. Um, you know, we're not, we don't require a first. It's a 2-1. But, you know, and we are open to any university and any degree background. And that's something I really want to make clear is that you, you don't need to be studying a specific degree to get into city. Um, we're open to everybody. Um, but the main thing that we're looking for is people that are just well rounded, have some experience. You know, we want people that have been involved in extracurricular activities and maybe volunteer work. We're not expecting um, years of work experience. If we were, we wouldn't run a grads program. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to work in a bank. But it's about how you present yourself and, you know, what, what challenging situations you maybe had to face or um, put yourself in when it, either project work um, in, a, in a working environment, whether it be in a bar work, um, anything like that. That's kind of what we're looking for. Being a good communicator and a team player is such an important thing at City that that's why we're looking at this for this for our graduates. Laura, I, you've probably had a few analysts come through your teams and stuff. I don't know if you've got any examples of the kind of qualities that have stood out to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Emma. Yes. Um, I think I think what to think about during your application and also in any interviews is um, your ability to problem solve and you don't you don't need to necessarily relate that directly to the job um, but if you can show examples of where you have solved a challenge or come up with an innovative process or an innovative solution to some issue you've been facing and that can be personally or that could be at school or university um, that's really what we're looking for, because if you think if you think about um, at a base level what banks do, we provide financial services and solutions to help our clients fix a problem or to make a, a problem um, or a, a service that they provide more efficient and more effective. And so really showing your ability to, to sort of look at something and piece together what a solution might look like is really important. So, you know, for example, in, in our role working with governments, um, a lot of our job is to, to look at the policy aims in the country. So in the UK, for example, it could be green recovery and you know, aiming for net zero. Um, what can we do as a bank through the products that we provide um, help the government to achieve that? Um, and so there are two ways we can do that. One, we can do it in the, in the products that we um, offer directly to the government. But then we also have industry teams which work with all types of corporates across the UK. So we've got you know, the healthcare team, we've got the consumer team, we've got the um, metals and mining team, we've got the energy team. What can we do in the work with those corporates from a green perspective, which will also help the government hit their policy goals? So it's thinking of what you're trying to achieve and sort of you know pushing forward um, to to put something in place to achieve that that's that's what we're looking for so problem solving really important and it, it doesn't have to be large scale it just has to be innovative and well thought through and then in addition I think leadership is important so showing where you might have taken a leadership position in a in a team or in a club that you might have been a part of and then teamwork very very crucial and um, so working with others because like I said we have such a big global network um, it's very important that you're happy to collaborate with others and enjoy working like that day to day. Yeah, really good, really insightful. And, and there's so many things about what, what to do, which is great. So much um, advice. So on that theme, I love asking this one. So hopefully <laughs> there's, there's something you can uh, bring to the table um, in terms of that's what to do, but what not to do. <laughs> so are there any things that you've seen from students like mistakes that they've made that you think, oh, why did you do that? That you can give um, shoots advice on? Um, from an application, yeah. From an application standpoint, lack of research, I think, is the key thing. Don't rush an application. Um, you know, I, I know we've said about the timeframes and and things moving, and, and do get your application in quick. So don't delay is another mis- one big mistake is miss- is not getting it in early enough, mm-hmm. but also not doing your research properly. So you you guys are already here. So you're already one step ahead of some of your peers that haven't attended events like this. You're already trying to learn about the organizations and the different areas. And I, I, I appreciate City doesn't make itself the easiest to navigate because we have multiple different business areas. And we try and make sure 
the website has got as much information on there for you as possible so you can learn about those different business areas but that would be my key advice is work out what's right for you because as Laura mentioned there's so many divisions in City it doesn't necessarily need to be a front office role um, you might you know everybody hears about investment banking but actually investment banking is such a big umbrella and there's so many factors in that you might be a perfect fit for City but it might be in one of the business areas you haven't heard about so private bank for example you might not have realized exactly what we're offering in that so make sure you are you know, reading up on all of the policies that City has, go to our corporate website, have a look at our quarterly results, check out our, our website where we, we really do detail what the different business areas do, um, come along to as many events as you can. Us at City are hosting quite a number of virtual events too, so you can, and they're on demand now, so if you like the sound of my voice, I'm on nearly every single one, so you can come and join, the, join me again. Um, uh, I think everyone's going to ban me from speaking at events after this. Um, that we've got a lot of advice around and things like that and we have some great websites where people from or city are talking about their jobs so my p biggest piece of advice turned around from what not to do is into research like do not rush an application and your online test if you get sent the online test don't just do it the second you get it and don't do it at like three o'clock in the, in the morning mm -hmm. give yourself some time you know take time to prepare time to prepare for interviews time to do your research that's really important but um, and laura you may have seen some examples of um grads coming through that have, have done something that you maybe would advise against <laughs> thanks emma yeah i my, my advice around that that is to not panic right like do your homework and um, be well prepared exactly as emma says um come in with with knowledge if there are any gaps in that knowledge because you don't understand then come armed with questions because it shows that you have a real interest and it shows that you have done your homework um so uh, so I would say that is that's number one. But when you're in there, it can feel overwhelming. You know, it can feel overwhelming. You know, there are a lot of people applying. It's a competitive process, but it's like anything. Um, you'll you'll learn the job on the job. So as long as you've done your homework and you're well prepared with your answers, um, not just about why you want to work in the industry, but why you want to work at City. And we've given you some examples of that today, so you can go and do some googling and find out um a little bit more about our charity work and our ESG um commitments and things um but to have have confidence and have confidence in the things that make you stand out like i said you may think that they're small examples but if you project them with confidence and show that you um can relate your experience in life thus far to a job um you know you're almost there so um so i think that's my but those are my sort of main areas of advice um and and enjoy the interview you know look like you're keen to work with us um we, we want to bring people in that you know we like interacting with so if it's an enjoyable experience then um i certainly leave feeling good about it mm, really good well i think we're out of time now which is a shame because there's so many more questions that have come in <laughs> um, um so I, I'm back on our booth very shortly, so anyone that's got follow-up questions, head to our booth. I'll be there with a couple of other colleagues as well, so we can answer more questions. Fabulous. I was going to say, that's that's brilliant, because there's probably quite a few specific questions as well. So Emma is there to answer all of those. So um, thank you so much to both of you. It's been brilliant, really insightful. Um, and I know that lots of students have got um, lots out of this. So thank you very much, and I'll speak to you all soon. It's a pleasure thanks, and thanks Lizzie. for having us, Lizzie. Um, and I just wanted to say to the students who've joined, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Well done you all for keeping going and finding out about all these firms when it's not easy to do so. Um, and it's, it's a challenging time. So, you know, keep going and well done for uh, for pushing forwards about your future. That's what's key. Thanks Aww. a lot. Lovely. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.